I'm good, mate. Uh, you know, a bit stressed with working while in fight camp, but you know, it is what we it is what it is. <laughs> Aye, mate. Um, you've got a massive fight coming up, but before we get into that, how is it being like a fighter of your level fighting on the world stage of bare knuckle and still holding down a full time job? Honestly, it's getting harder as I, I as I get older. Um, I seem to have less time now. Like you know, you got a family yourself, you know. How hard it is to juggle they're all getting bigger so they're getting hobbies so i just seem to be constantly in a rush you know it's uh i i do like a quite a chaotic life i don't like chilling out but yeah it is it is hard but i've got myself caught up in a rat race where <laughs> i got a good job that pays good money so that covers the bills so i got yeah. to do that job so i can do my hobby on the side you know it's hard like i didn't see my wife most of last week i'd seen her for like half an hour here and there then the weekend, the kids had their own event. So, yeah, it is hard. It is hard. But, you know, I'm trying to get to a place where I can say to my kids, look, work hard. And you can go to all these places like America or Marbella and Bulgaria yeah. without having to. I know it sounds like a stupid thing without having to pay for it. But for someone to take you to another country to compete for them, you know, that's like, that's such an honor and such a, a privilege to have. Like, you know, and, I just want to show my kids and other, you know, aspiring boxers that if you keep working on something, you know, you could stuff happen. You know, you don't have to worry about the money all the time. You know, I'm getting experiences that money can't buy, like you know. Yeah, hundred percent, and it, it is hard. Like I, I don't know on your level, but even just from like myself, like for example, just being to Spain there, work and film, and then coming home. And then, like, I'm editing what I've done in Spain. So, like, I'm still not sort of, like, spending time with the family. And then yeah. the kids are at classes or they're at school. And it's it's hard to juggle. So I totally understand where you're coming from there. you got to kind of go a bit selfish and a bit cold about it. Like, you know, I, like, I worry, like, you know, I haven't seen my kids now because I've been working away for two days. So my yeah. mind is I want to see them. You know, obviously it's FaceTime and all that. But I'm thinking, right, I want to see them now. But then... I've got to go to the gym to do a session. So it's kind of, you've got to kind of like steal yourself inside a little bit. Um, and it is, you know, fighting is very selfish, a very selfish sport. You know, the benefits help everyone, but you have got to have a little bit of steel inside. And it does hurt me a little bit, you know, having to be like, you know, our daddy be home after the gym or whatever. But, you know, we, we <laughs> my dream hasn't died yet. Like, you know, so as long as I've got that dream, I've got to keep going. Yeah, 100%. And this fight that you've got coming up, it's a huge fight, mate. Yet again, I think every fight you've had has been a massive fight for the BKFC, to be honest. But this fight coming up with uh, Felipe Meyer, I think he's had uh, he's 15 and 10 in MMA, which is a great record. Yeah. Um, he's one and one within <coughs> BKFC. I think he fought on BKFC 54 and 58 in Bulgaria. And um, he's an he's exciting character, isn't he? Yeah, he's a, I met him when I went out to corner Marco, um, was it November the 1st or last year? And I met him then, and, you know, he's a lovely guy. Um, his English isn't the best, but, you know, we you kind of, like, know what people, you know, yeah. how people are. And, you know, he's a bit of a gentleman, to be honest. You know, he's messaged me a couple of times. He's always, like, you know, um, being positive on my stories and stuff. And he said, oh, I'd love to fight you. Um, and that's kind of how the fight started getting made. But... Yeah, it is. It's a it's a dangerous fight. You know, he's a big guy for the weight. He's got like this all out brawling style. So I'm excited for it. Now I'm excited for the card. Um, it's going to be fucking mega, to be honest. Yeah, like um, from what I've seen of Felipe, my I've met him a couple of times. I met him in Bulgaria and Marbella, and um, yeah, he is he is a lovely guy. Like he's just full of energy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's, I, when I seen it, um, I can't remember which one. I'm not a massive BJJ fan, but one of the Gracies was there in Bulgaria. And Felipe he jumped through the ropes and was hugging him because obviously he's a legend in Brazil. And yeah, yeah. He, he's he's a hell of a character, you know. He, he's it's it's a, like you said, it's a the type of fight I want since I've been with BKFC. Like the six fights, including Felipe, have all been against killers, you know. And I think it's because I've done so well. Um, I they won't drop me back down a level now. Um, and say right, well, go fight these, you know, guys who haven't had or fights because I've proven that you know I'm one of the, the best in the game. So I don't mind that. That's what I wanted to do. I you know I never wanted to be number one pound for pound or 
world champion, or they would be nice, and I would like to get that thing. But I want to like have a legacy where like 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 all these people that he's fought, um, like all these people that he's competed against. You know, that's what that's what drives me on. Like you know, it is nice being called <laughs> number one in the world, but you know, we'll get back. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Like just looking at the people you fought with in BKFC, like Pellerano, Tyler Good, John, Bobby Taylor, Louis Palomino, Franco Tenaglia, that all had fights, and the only losses you've had have been on like close fights, haven't they? Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people are writing me off, but Franco wins on the twelfth of October. The only two people I've lost to would be the two world champions at lightweight. The only two world champions they've ever had. And like you said, um, they were both close fights. Some people thought I won, some people yeah. thought I didn't. So it's not like I was outclassed, you know, I was in the fights. You know, I can't, I, I'm not one of these people who grumbles about the decision because I, you know, I can see why they won, you know. I But said, like, I, I, I think people are writing me off because I've had two losses. But when you look at who the people I've lost to, it's not like, I, you know, <laughs> like some guy off the street is upset me. It's <laughs> two killers, like, you know, it's like two of the best in the world. So, and like I said, if Frank wins and he's world champion, and because the first fight was so close, that I'm sure there's going to be an appetite for a rematch as long as I do my job. Yeah, definitely. And I think the BKFC and that, see that how, how the losses have been, because you don't just get opportunities straight away like you've got there. They obviously still say that you're a massive competitor in the division and uh, you belong up there with the top. Yeah, I've got, I've got a really good relationship with um, Dave Feldman. You know, he's, he's a great guy. He's been supportive of me from day one. Um, you know, I didn't come into BKFC with a fanfare or the background some of the guys have come in with. And, you know, I think he took a bit of a chance on me, in honesty. You know, like Dan Chapman, for example, he was on Team GB, World Champion BKB, yeah. You know, he, he's he's got a following. Connatini the same, Tyler Goodjohn the same, Mick Tyler the same. I was probably a little bit of the wild card when I went over at the time. Yeah. Um but I you know he's been great to me. He, he's always if I text him saying like, you know, about fights and stuff, he's always um receptive. So I just gotta do the job now and make sure that I can repay the faith in me, um and get my start to climb back up. That's the big thing. There's big fights at lightweight for me still. So um, we'll see now. We'll get past Felipe and look what happens in the new year. Yeah, and obviously you fought in different promotions and bare knuckle and that, but from April the 21st in 2022, how's your BKFC journey been, mate? The places you've travelled to and that, like, did you ever expect to be doing these types of things? <laughs> Never in a million years, but, you know, when, when I signed with BKFC, it was a tough decision because I, I love the guys in BKB. And obviously they became international then with BYB. But I thought I, I, I fancy BKFC ever since I started watching them on like little Twitter feeds. And the first time I had a text off um, Dave Feldman saying, Oh, you're fighting Pellerano in Fort Lauderdale. I just, I still like at the time, I looked at the phone, like telling my wife, I'm like, I'm going to Miami to fight. And um, it's, it's bizarre because. <laughs> you see, you're like all these guys fighting around the world, you know, and world champion boxers, and, and it didn't really sink in until I got off the plane. And that two year period coming up to it'd be three years in April, it's been the best part of my career, probably one of the, the best periods in my life, you know. Um, I, I got stopped in the hotel, I'm in Bradford at the moment, I got stopped in the hotel reception for a photo earlier, so that stuff still, still just like it's. Bizarre, but yeah, the, the three years I've been with BKFC have been definitely the highlight of all my, my fighting career. And, you know, I think I'm going to probably finish my career with BKFC. Yeah, and like, look at now fighting in my base, Spain, where you've got like entertainment with the likes of Exhibit, Dizzy <laughs> Rapid, Kodak Black and all that, all performing on, on, on a card you're fighting on, mate. Like, it's crazy, isn't it, bro, how much the sport's elevated in such a small town. It's, it's, this is next level, this card, you know, I grew up listening to like hip hop and like I remember coming home from school, you stick it on MTV, exhibit be doing Pimp My Ride, so it's, <laughs> and like he's coming to the show and like apparently he's performing in one of the parties and you know Dizzy Rascal, um, I seen him perform in IP for years ago and it's just, these these people are like mega stars, like you know, they're, I know they're a bit older and stuff now, but they're, they're superstars of our generation, yeah, so... Wonderful. And to be like sharing a backstage with them is just, as like you said, it's another level. Um, it's, and I think that's because obviously 
McGregor's bought shares in the company and he's moved that needle that little bit more, like, you know. So I think it's up to us as the fighters now. So when we've got the ex rise watching us is to put on the performances so people are hooked on the sport, you know? Yeah, definitely. And how do you what do you think of the main cards, like the free title fights, like Tanagula, So or Trout Franco and David Mundell and Danny Christie? What do you think of them fights? It's insane. The the whole card's insane. There's all 50-50 matchups. Um, you know, even the guys who are making like the debuts against each other, if you look at what they've done before, yeah. they've had good fights. But the top three fights, they could be uh, main events on any card in any yeah. country in the world for BFC. And I would pay money just to watch those three fights if I was on the card. I would I was gonna go to Marbella if I wasn't on the card anyway for the weekend just to watch the fights and be around the fighters because I think I don't know a fighter who's with BKFC who isn't going you know I spoke to you know John who chased earlier he's looking for flights uh Conatini's going over with his partner um Christine Ferrer is going over you know there's loads and loads of BKFC fights going there and you know just to be around them I'm a bit glad they didn't come up with you guys um to the press conference you know um but yeah, it's just going to be a, 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 an insane event. And I think the thing about BKC Marbella, it's not just about the fights, it's about the whole experience. So it will bring in those extra people who will then become fans of the, the bare knuckle, you know? Yeah, like it's not just, it's it's the it's the whole weekend, isn't it? We're not, when we're all together talking in the lobby of the hotel or whatever, it's just nice to be around the whole bare knuckle community, isn't it? Yeah, and, so, and like fighters are some of like the most... You know, receptive people in the world, you know, it's like you go up to a fighter and talk to them because I don't think they get as much fanfare as like, you know, footballers or, you know, anyone else in other sports. Uh, and I think because they're a fighter, people have got like this little bit of, um, you know, they're a bit nervous, wrong number. They're like the most receptive people on the planet. You know, they'll, they'll have photos, they'll have a chat with you. So I think it's going to be it's going to be a wicked weekend for anyone going out there. Oh, it definitely is, mate. What do people think when, obviously, the people who don't know that James Lilly is a fighter when you're, I don't know, it might be a work colleague or someone who, a friend who you've met, like, what the hell do they think? Because you come across as this humble, working family man and then they see this footage of an absolute savage machine. In the <laughs> <laughs> what do they yeah, think it's when you're fighting for the first time? They uh they do they double take um I got a new guy working with Callum he's probably watching this in his room now, and he came <laughs> to um I sparred on I sparred yesterday up in Scott McHugh's gym, and I don't think he's ever been in like you know a boxing gym before because he's into other sports and stuff and he's just like fuck you know <laughs> and, and like I'm I'm quite easy go lucky I'm laughing I'm joking I got a bit of banter all the time I just don't think people can kind of see the two together because. I just enjoy both of them, you know. I like, I like having a laugh and I like fighting, you know. It's just <laughs> yeah. it is. crazy. What can we expect to see from James Lights Out Lily on the 12th of October? I've got, you know, I I put the work in for this camp. You know, we've been, we had like a, a bit of a rumor we were going to fight sort of, well, what are we now? Three, nearly three weeks out. So I must have known about 12, 13 weeks out. We were training anyway. We were working on power, so I've been doing a lot more weights, but I've got to perform on this one, you know. Um, not that my last two performances were bad. You know, they were still decision losses, but I've got to get step my game up now so I can continue fighting at that level and not have to drop back down. You know, I want to... I, uh, this fight means everything to me, you know. I'm not looking past fleet mate, but I know this will lead to bigger things. Um, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be like I was pre Palomino, you know, back to as I, as I were. And I said, I've been, I've been working on some power, so I'm hoping it's going to be lights out again. Yeah, 100%, mate. And are you still training with David, David Owen? Yes, um, he's working away at the moment. Um, if he's watching, He's one of the most miserable men you've ever met in your life. <laughs> he's, got, he's got he's got a cold at the He's got a little cough he has, and he won't text me back. And I'm like, Dave, I'm trying to organise trains for you. He's like, I don't talk to people when I'm ill. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, but no, he's working. He's working away at the minute, so we kind of hock up towards the weekends. But yeah, he's going to be in my corner until the end. Now he's not just a trainer. You know, he's he's one of my best mates. But we're seeing with Josh and Wally. 
you know, people don't realise that the trainers, they're like, you know, I spend more time with them than I do with my family at the moment. Um, they're the ones who know about your, your fears, your goals. It's quite a unique bond you get with, like, your trainers. Like I said, I, I don't consider them, like, you know, workmates. They're, they're my friends, you know. They're the ones who see the worst of me and probably the best of me. So, yeah, it's, it's great to have them around me. And obviously the main fight on the night is in your weight. What's your honest opinions and who do you think will come out victorious out of Franco Tanaglia and Tony Soto? It's, you know what, it's a difficult one for me to call because obviously me and Franco got history, um, great guy. Uh, me and Tony were serving each other for about 12 months, um, but I didn't do my job in April, so that, that's probably why we didn't fight. Uh, and I like both of the guys, but I, I think I don't think Tony's going to be able to keep Franco off. I think Franco surprisingly hits harder than um, than 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 I thought he would. Um, he's got good pressure. Um, I don't think Tony moves as well as me. Um, you know, he, he's a warrior as well. You know, he can take a dig, but I don't think he's going to be able to keep Franco off. And I think. You know, with with the fact that you know he's travelling over and everything else, I think Frank was going to beat him. I probably say it's probably going to go to points because I can't see it being a stoppage, but I, I can see Frank winning. Yeah, and obviously you're still um, ranked number one in the UK rankings, and there's been a lot of talk about after this fight, um, the UK title is going to be on the line, the 155 pound strap. And the the fighters in the mix is obviously um, Ben Bonner, Lewis Kane, Johnny Graham, as he's come back down to 155 pound, and yourself. So, what do you think of them fights as well? Yeah, like I said, um, you know, I'm you not can... saying look as Felipe and Maya, by the way, because I know you don't do shit like that. But just yeah, talk. yeah, it's like you said, like, at the moment, I can't say I can. I know there's big fights on the horizon. Um, and I'd love to be a BKFC UK title holder, it'd be an honour for me. Um, obviously, those guys are all you know fighting amongst themselves. I kind of heard who the title fight is. Um, funny enough, Ben Bonner messaged me uh, a few weeks ago when we were saying that we weren't sure when we were fighting. We we're like, oh, we'll fight each other. You know, <laughs> it's that kind of it's that kind of thing. Like you know, obviously, I want to I want to stay the number one in the UK. Um, I want to get back in the world ranking. So if there's guys around me who've got UK titles and they want to come and take that spot off me, I'm receptive to it. You know, I I still want to do a BKFC show in Swansea. We got a nice arena, holds two and a half thousand people. Title fighting that would be great. But I'll do whatever they say. If they tell me after this fight they want me back stateside, obviously I want to go stateside. I hear there's going to be a show in Dubai next year, a show in Madrid. A show in yeah. Italy. So if those opportunities come up, I'm I'm obviously going to do that. Although I love fighting the UK, it's nice to get a crowd there. You know, I've done that quite a lot. So fighting abroad, <laughs> this is a lot better. You know, that's the thing now, though, James, isn't it? Like with you being fighting over America, you've built a fan base up over there, haven't you? So the fans are actually wanting James Lilly to be back over stateside. Yeah, I, I, I get messed all the time. Like when you're coming back stateside, and you know, I said like I'm. It's the same as Mel Shah, you know, she's had fights over there, and although she's had a couple of losses, she's still very popular stateside, so I, that's what I want to do, I, I want to get this win, and then get the opportunity to go back over there, but like I said, I I don't mind travelling, you know, they're doing shows in Japan, that's a dream destination for me, I've only ever been to Asia once, so Japan yeah. would, be, would just be mind-blowing, you know, um, like I said, Dubai, another one, um, Italy, I, I thought there was an amateur, so it would be nice to go back there as a, a professional fighter. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting, and I think it's going to end up with, you know, British guys fighting each other on shows in different countries, because I think the UK is very underrated by the standard of fighters. So it could be that I fight one of these guys in another country for the UK title. You know, it could be something along those lines. So... Yeah, it's a really exciting time to be in BKFC. I just wish I was probably two or three years younger because I don't know how much longer I've got left in the sport. <laughs> and all the years are just going by too fast, aren't they? It's flying. Um, it's, it's mad. Like my, my oldest daughter started comprehensive school this year and she's only ever known, like I made my comeback in boxing when she was born. So she's only ever known me as a fighter. So I kind of got her 
think of them a little bit now. That's not to say I'm thinking of retiring anytime soon, but I can see like you know the end of the lines going to be in the next couple of years because I owe it to my family to give them some time back as well. Yeah, that's the thing. No, if you keep winning, the the, the paychecks get bigger, don't they? So if you keep winning, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'll be here yeah. for another six years. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to stop my wife shopping for sofas and furniture and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is what it is, you know. And that's what I think, like we touched on earlier with BKFC, they're seeing the benefits of the sport now. When, you know, my wife used to hate me going fighting. And my kids didn't like me fighting. Now, if I come home and I've won, and I've got that you know, bigger paycheck and a little bit more fame or whatever, they can see the benefits of it rather than me, you know, coming home with like six, seven hundred quid from my local show or whatever. You know, it's yeah. they're, they're seeing the benefits now. So it's kind of hard. It's one of those ones, you know. Yeah, and when are you going actually out of my bear? Because it'd be good to obviously we're going out a couple of weeks before, about ten days before. Um, it'd be good to meet you out there, do a bit of filming before the fight. Yeah, I think I'm going out about seven days before. It's, it's just awkward with work. Um, yeah. The flight times from, I can't remember if I found Ricardo for Bristol, are pretty good. So I found a little apartment to put the boys and myself up for a couple of days till we move up to the fight or hotel. So yeah, I think I'm out there for a week before, um, six days before and then a day after. So I'm going to use a Sunday because I've got quite a lot of people from Swansea coming over, so it'll be nice to have a beer with them on the Sunday and you know, thank yeah. them all for coming over because I think there's like a massive VIP party after and I think the fighters are expected to go so people can have photos and stuff. So I, I might not see, um, you know, my lot until the Sunday. So I'm going to be out there for a few beers. Oh, it's going to be some show, mate. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. the VIP party is going to be insane. Oh, it's going to be nuts. <laughs> Crazy, but before we wrap it up, James, is there any uh, shout outs or sponsors or anything you want to give a big up to, pal? Yeah, I got um a couple of. I did write it down on my phone, but obviously, <laughs> I don't want you on my phone. So, uh, <laughs> fuck it out. Don't be a fighter, kid. Stay in school. Um, <laughs> I got the Precision Group. Um, a guy called Dean Patterson. I met him at the BKFC trials in London. He's uh he's been looking to get in the band up when he's fighting on the BYB. Lead show now. He come on board as a sponsor. We've also done some sparring with him. PM Financial, um, OC Carpentry, and I know I was going to forget this. Denny's UK. Uh, there's a couple of others, but the JMW Heating and um, Cooling. Um, is it cooling? Oh, fucking Central Heating or whatever. They've uh, they've been with me for the last few years. Always supporting. Always like never asked for anything. You know, a couple of shouts on social media. Their logos them supporting us um, or Richie at King's Fight as well the, them supporting us, it helps us with these types of camps, helps us go out you know, a couple of days earlier in Marbella to acclimatise and that so just big shout out to them, big thank you to them um, to all the guys and fighters messaging me and supporting me thank you for still believing in me um, we're not done yet, we still got a few chapters to write before this is over yeah, definitely have, mate. I've got a few more belts to lift, mate, before this. Yeah, chat. exactly. Go get one. <laughs> definitely, mate. But I really appreciate your time as always, James, and I can't wait to catch up with you in my bear, pal. Yeah, mate, thank you very much. And like I said, you, you're you probably, from the other side, someone who others want to aspire to be like as well because you started this as a hobby and you've taken yourself to the next level along with the BKFC fighter. So it's a big congratulations to you. I know I've said it before, but... You know, you're living your dream as well, not mate, and it just shows that if you keep working hard and putting the hours in, it pays off. So, well done to you as well, bro. Yeah, really appreciate that, James, mate. Fucking, we'll, we'll all get there in the end, mate. A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly, mate. We just gotta keep our work in. Hundred percent, bro. I'll speak to you very soon, mate, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, brother. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Lou. Have a nice evening. See you later, mate. Bye, bye. Bye, mate. Bye now, bye.